speaker who is not only one of the most successful people on this stage, but on any stage, because everything he touches turns to gold. And he has, way, he started, I don't know how many companies that he sold for staggering amounts, pioneering telecom, building the largest Wi-Fi network in the world, phone, and all kinds of other interesting companies. And he has such unique ways of addressing things, like for instance, being afraid of flying, and he cured that by buying a very nice private jet, and now he's not afraid anymore. Uh, he is going to tell us about his brand new company, and this is a company that makes a very, very interesting distinction between having sex, because it's a lot of fun, and creating babies, because you really love to have a baby. So please give it up for Martin Versovsky, the founder of Prelude. <laughs> Yes, uh, good morning everyone. So yeah, we're going to talk about uh, making babies. Um, so that's what my new company is about. It's about making babies and having babies at any age and having healthy babies when you're ready. And so the first thing I'd like to address is whenever you introduce a new company, people say, what's the problem? What's the problem with making babies the way we make them now, which is having sex? And the problem is that people who make babies having sex fail uh, a third of the time. That is, a third of the, of the time during the life of a woman, a third of the times uh, women will fail to either have any children, which is one woman in five, or to have as many children as they would like to have, which is one woman in three. Uh, so a third failure rate for something as essential as starting a family is a staggering failure rate. Now, when people fail at having babies having sex, they tend to go to infertility clinics. And infertility clinics are places where you try to make up for the shortcomings of having babies or making babies at home. But what happens is that people tend to show up when it's too late. And so even though the technology of infertility clinics is absolutely amazing and has greatly improved, a third of the people who pay to have a baby at an infertility clinic never get to have one. So the fertility rates are declining very rapidly in the United States and in Europe and in Asia. They're only going up by now in, uh, in Africa, and that's basically it, and some parts of the Middle East. And the rest of the world has collapsing fertility rates. We're 7 billion humans now, we're going to go to 9 billion, and then the fertility is going to collapse around the world. Some countries like China have already seen tremendous decline infertility, Japan, Europe, Spain, I'm a citizen of Spain, Spain has a fertility rate of 1.3, you need a fertility rate of 2.1 just for the population to stay the same. And the United States has now a fertility rate of 1.9, which is below replenishment rate. And so, even though we now think of the refugee crisis and people escaping and a lot of, where we see a lot of people that need to be placed somewhere, in human history, that's going to be a short-lived stage because as soon as humanity reaches economic development, fertility rates collapse. And they collapse because people have moved, having babies from the 20s, teens and 20s, which is when humans are designed to have children, to the 30s and 40s. And it is very unreliable to have babies in the 30s and 40s. And that's why a third of the women never achieve their goals or a third of the couples never achieve their goals. And then, of course, there's other elements here that a family is not exactly what it used to be. While most babies are born to a heterosexual couples, there's also gay couples, let's say, for whom it's pretty obvious that sex is not the best way to make a baby lesbian couples, for whom also it's obvious that sex is not the best way to make a baby, or single moms or single dads who want to make babies. 
So when I was looking at this and I was seeing, wow, this is such an unsatisfying situation, I started doing research and I find out that there's three other problems that are huge, not only infertility, but a third of the people who actually get pregnant hoping to have a baby miscarry. So there's a tremendous amount of miscarriages. Uh, a third of all pregnancies end up in miscarriage. And so that's pretty sad and that's pretty common. And then there's another very vast number, which is abortions. There's two kinds of abortions. There's the obvious kind of abortion, which is where people didn't want to have a baby. But now there's hundreds of thousands of abortions that are being done because while a woman is pregnant, there's new type of tests. They're called NIPT, non-invasive prenatal testing, where when they're pregnant, they find out that there's something seriously wrong with their coming child and they choose to abort. And there's hundreds of thousands of those cases in Europe and the United States. So not only you have infertility, but you have miscarriages, you have clinical abortions. And the last issue that is pretty scary about having a child is congenital illness. So we now know a lot about congenital illness. We can now sequence human beings. My, I myself, it costs around $10,000. I recently got my genome sequenced. And you can do it um, at a cost of, yes, 10,000 for your full genome, but if you go with companies like 23andMe, you can get most of your genome for a few hundred dollars. And so it is prudent to sequence yourself and your partner sequence herself or himself before you have a child. Because there are many situations in which two parents will carry illnesses that in one in four cases will lead to serious congenital illness like cystic fibrosis or thalassemia or sickle cell anemia. There's thousands of those. So what I decided to do in my next company that's called Prelude Fertility is to solve these four problems, infertility, congenital illness, miscarriages, and clinical abortions. How do you solve this? Well, the answer is you implement what we call the Prelude Method. And the Prelude Method consists in showing up at something similar to an infertility clinic, but now we're going to call it a fertility clinic, a place where you go to make a baby. So the solution basically involves not to make babies at home anymore. Now, you would say, well, not making babies at home sounds pretty ridiculous, but I would like to remind you that not so long ago, people used to have babies at home. And I'm sure when somebody told them you should have them at a clinic, they thought it was as strange as I am telling you now that maybe you shouldn't make babies at home. Because if I tell you you shouldn't have them at home, most of you would agree that you shouldn't have them at home because when we used to have them at home, one in 15 used to die, the baby or the mother. And so you say, well, maybe we shouldn't have them at home. There are still some people who would like to have their babies at home and have them at home. Generally, it's not their first child. It's risky. Some people may want to do it. But I would say that most of you would agree that we shouldn't have babies at home. Well, what I'm saying now is we shouldn't make them at home. Or what we're saying is, look, sex is great, but maybe not exactly to make babies, given the alternative, and given that it's failing a third of the time. Now, how would you make babies if you don't make them at home? Well, you would make them in a clinic, just like you have them in a clinic or in a hospital. So first, you freeze eggs and sperm when you're fertile. Because the biggest problem of people who show up at infertility clinics is they show up when it's too late. So the first thing you do is while you're fertile, when you're fertile, meaning when you're in your early 30s or 20s, you just go and freeze your sperm if you're a man, or you go through a two-week process, slightly more complicated, but still nothing, not as complicated as actually having a baby certainly raising a child, going through labor, and so on. It's somewhat, egg freezing is more complicated than sperm freezing, but they're both 
pretty reasonable procedures compared to everything else that's going to come in the life of raising, having and raising children. So that's the first step, and you may do that when you don't even know with who you were going to have a child with. And by doing that, you are already buying yourself tremendous optionality at having babies at any time in life. Because the experience we have with donor eggs, because so many women are showing up at infertility clinics in their late 30s and 40s and able to have children, and many of them are using donor eggs from 25-year-olds. And we know that 50-year-old women get pregnant 80% on the first try when they use eggs of a 25-year-old. So we know it has nothing to do with the age of the woman, and it has all to do with the age of the eggs. And men should freeze their sperm, not because men grow infertile in the same way as women. Indeed, men are having children at three times the rate than women in their 40s, which shows that probably everyone would like to have children in their 40s, or, or many people would like to have children in their 40s, but they only men can successfully do this at three times the rate as women. But the reason for men to, to freeze their sperm in their 20s is because there is an associ strong association with mental illness and having children later in life, and also because your testicles may not be the safest place to store your sperm since things can happen to you, such as accidents or things like that. Um, I should say that before this company, I built a cloud computing company, and I think, and when I built one of the first cloud computing companies, the biggest difficulty was to convince people to take their data away from their PCs and store them in the cloud. They used to love their PCs. And if that was hard, I'm thinking how hard it's going to be to convince people to keep their data away from their testicles and their ovaries, right? And because that's all it is, it's genetic data. And what we're saying is you should store it safely. It's sort of like cloud computing for your gametes. Your gametes are your genetic information. So after you store your data safely in a safer place than your ovaries and your testicles, you then make an embryo when you're ready. So you don't need to have, you know, force make it, have a child at, at 32 but because your time is running out or whatever. You have a child when you're ready, which may very well be 42 and not 32, or maybe 32 and 42, or maybe any combination that you'd like to figure out. So you make embryos when you're ready, and then the next thing is you genetically sequence the embryos, which is something that we can now do for a very reasonable cost. Having a baby the prelude way may, cost, may end up costing $5,000 a baby, which is less than the cost of a medical checkup later on in life. So you make, you make, you genetically sequence the embryos to find out the ones that would have miscarry or the ones that you would have aborted. Because one thing is to have 15 embryos and never be pregnant with any of those embryos. And the other thing which is so common in society now is we have pregnant women that we are systematically advising to abort. And I'm not against abortion for religious reasons, but I am against abortion because it's sad, right? And if you have the choice of choosing an embryo that doesn't have that illness and you were never pregnant or you are going to be pregnant and in the fourth month you're going to get some terrible news, I think it's safer to select the right embryo than to go through an abortion. The last thing is you implant only one, because the reason why there's so many twins associated with IVF is because IVF is seen as the last desperate move, and so people make embryos, put many embryos, and then you have Central Park, you walk around Central Park, everybody has twins, right? But you're like, Okay, twins is fine, but twins is high risk. And what Prelude is about is about making you have a healthy baby whenever you are ready. And that is not something that multiple pregnancies is not a good start for having a healthy baby when you're ready, just because multiple pregnancies are more risky, okay? So the whole Prelude method is basically free sex and sperm, make embryos when you're ready, genetically sequence the embryos, and implant only one. So this is a summary of what my new company is going to do. We're going to open up, instead of having infertility clinics, we're going to open up fertility clinics. And my advice to all of you who would still haven't had children and would like to have them, and would like to have them whenever you're ready, 
is as a first move, preserve your fertility, and then you'll be able to access all these tools that are available to you uh, today. So thank you very much. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.